Welcome freelancers, my name is Lunar. Welcome to this first video for the game Anthem, the upcoming open world first person shooter RPG from EA and Bioware. I have another YouTube channel very different from this one covering player unknowns backgrounds and other FPS games, but one game in particular I am really excited about playing early next year is Anthem. I noticed though, despite being hyped as a future big and successful game, only five months away from release and practically no news coverage of it here on YouTube. Well, if you want to see daily news, info, rumors, updates and guides when the game does release, stick around and subscribe. In this video then, we have a bunch of cool stuff to go over. All week long, the devs have been answering questions about the game. Some of the info is new, some of the answers were just, we have no info. Either way, there are lots of things to talk about, so let's do it. On the question then of how will we see new content? The devs plan on releasing new content frequently, no long periods of in-between content, it's likely that a lot of the new stuff will arrive through regular in-game updates and hotfixes instead of traditional DLCs, but that doesn't mean they won't have DLCs, and the good thing is that we have been promised any DLCs that we do see will be free. But they don't want to go long periods of time with no new content, I think they're aiming to update the game more as they go along. Will we be able to progress even after we completed the main storyline? And that's a really good question. Well, in fact, post-story content is a huge part of the game. There's no denying the game is going to be fairly similar to Destiny in the way it's structured, like missions, looting, and so on. There will also be expansions to the story later as well. All this post-game content is referred to as Elder content, and it's what you will actually spend most of the time in-game playing. It's vital they get this part right as well because it will control the game's replayability and of course a game like this, replayability is everything. Will there be large populated non-combat areas to explore and NPCs to talk to like the Citadel or Omega in Mass Effect? Well, as stated many times, Fort Tarsus is pretty big. You'll have plenty of NPCs and non-combat areas to explore there. Are freelancers a faction and can you join other factions? Well, freelancers are a faction in game and you're part of it but no, you cannot join other ones. Other factions are in the game to serve as different NPC roles and story progression and stuff like that. For example, the ciphers, they're good for providing information and analysis during expeditions and will help with things like long combat weaponry, for example. On the other hand, you have factions like Dominion who are the main antagonists of the freelancers. But no, you can't join other factions, although I'm sure there will be plenty of missions and stuff to do for them in the game. Will the difficulty system be anything like it is in Diablo 3? Once you reach the hardest difficulty in Diablo, the tiers will escalate. So for example, it starts off in easy, will go up to normal, hard, expert, expert 2, expert 3, and so on. It's a cool system for when new gear is added to the game. Well, according to the devs, the answer is yes. The difficulty system will be similar to Diablo 3. And one of the biggest questions will be though, how will difficulty scale when you're part of a party? as of course players will be different levels, so it wouldn't make any sense for enemies to be different levels when you're in a group together, so all that stuff kind of has to be figured out and explained to us. What about the questions of higher tier gear, for example ancient and legendary? Will our freelancers have to be a certain level to acquire them or equip them? Well there will be a minimum level you have to reach in order to equip legendary or masterworks level gear, at least that's what they say about it so far. We don't have a lot of details on it yet though, but from what we know, you won't be able to equip really high level stuff if you're early in the game. And to be honest, it's unlikely you will unlock really high level stuff early in game anyway. A couple other questions about weapons. Rangers are not able to equip heavy guns like the minigun and Colossus can't equip pistols. So the weapons you use are influenced by the javelin that you use. A question then to the devs about which is better, Storm or Interceptor? While the devs say it's hard to say whether Storm is more fragile than Interceptor, we will need to play to find out I guess. What about interchangeable ultimates for javelins? Well the ultimates for each javelin will not be interchangeable at launch, but they are looking into this and it will be tied into gear in the future if they do go with that. What about the question of crossplay with Xbox and PC? Well crossplay is being looked into, but it will not be available at launch. There is also talk of shared game saves with PC and Xbox though as well. So you can't play with Xbox players if you're on PC and vice versa, but you can play on PC and save your game progress and then switch to the Xbox and continue from where you saved, which is a pretty cool idea. Although there is no concrete evidence for this yet. We will have to wait and see. What about Javelin loadout? Well, you will be able to save your loadout per javelin so you can quickly switch to a new setup and I think that's really a good idea because your javelins of course have different abilities and you will have different playstyles like you will play DPS or tank or whatever. So having your javelin already set up so you can quickly switch is a good thing. 
A question about loadouts and gear. You won't be able to change out your weapons and gear outside of Fort Tarsus or your Strider, so you can't switch during combat, only inside your Strider and Fort Tarsus, and potentially other non-combat areas. Are there settings for matchmaking in Anthem? So if you want to play with a certain type of player, such as wanting to play with the Colossus, if you're Storm and you need a tank, can you look for specific ones? Well, the devs will try to balance parties and matchmaking for you, but they don't want to have two exclusionary of options, meaning they don't want certain players to be left out too often. So essentially they're gonna pick the teams for you when they matchmake. Of course, you can always play with your friends. Will we be able to unlock different colors as the game progresses, or will we only be able to purchase new color schemes? Well, you can unlock customization and personalization options by playing the game, so no purchase necessary, although every game does have in-game cosmetics you can buy, so I'm sure they will be in there somewhere. Does the Interceptor fly and run faster than other javelins? Well, the answer is no. While it's more agile during a fight and during flight, the devs want teams to be able to fly together, and so none of the javelins are faster than the others, so that way you will always be sticking together as a group. Is the game set up for tank, damage, and support roles? If so, is Colossus the only tank, or can other javelins be equipped for a tank role? And the same question for the others. Well, each javelin can fill multiple roles if you want to. The Colossus will have some explicit aggro capabilities, but in theory, any javelin will have the ability to tank in some way. So I guess each of the different javelins will just have more options available for you if you want to play that style. Next question, will there be idle animations that you can get in game, so you can equip them as part of your loadout? And the answer is, no, they don't currently have anything like that in-game, but it's a good idea and they might add it in the future. Finally then, guys, what about PC requirements? Well, they still don't know the PC requirements yet, but they expect them to be similar to Mass Effect and Andromeda. Well, guys, so that's about everything we found out from the game devs this week about Anthem. Some new info, some we already knew, and some we didn't get a clear answer to. But as we get closer to launch, hopefully we will see more clear info. If you guys enjoyed this video and find it helpful, subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss my next upload. I'm going to be covering every bit of Anthem info that we get. Like and comment as well. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys, and I will see you in the next one. Peace out.